next oh we got what did we just witness by the young hockey psychology now y'all tell me react to this video i guess it was a good game all right so we're gonna just see all right if you want more initial videos hit that like button hit that sub button let's just hop it Garfield, one second left. What did we just witness? I don't know. After being down 4-1 to the Oilers, the Canucks scored four unanswered goals to complete the biggest comeback of the NHL playoffs so far. Are you Game serious? Was unbelievable from start to finish. So let's break down exactly how the no. Vancouver Canucks pulled off yet another incredible comeback and what it means for the rest of the series. All right, here we go, bro. Oh, we got to see this, bro. Come back? Coming into round two, this all-Canadian matchup loaded with talent on both sides was highly anticipated. The two fan bases hate one another, and only one of these teams will have a chance to bring the cup back to Canada after this round. Heading into game one, the things to avoid for Vancouver were simple stay out of the box. With the Oilers power play clicking at a ridiculous 47%, no one has been even close to successfully shutting it down. Being on home ice and jacked up with the crowd, Vancouver throws that game plan right out the window by taking a too many men penalty and putting the oh, best power play in the on, world bro. on the ice. Rookie mistake. Great start. Now, no one has been able to solve this Oilers power play because of the personnel and Connor McDavid's ability to make a play in virtually every spot of the ice. Most power okay. players usually have their star players. Like, check me, let me know. We need to do some uh, McDavid highlights. We need to. Make a play in to. virtually every spot of the ice. Most power plays usually have their star players in set positions where they like to shoot the puck or make a play. Okay. But with McDavid and Dreisaitl and all the other weapons on the Oilers power play, they are all constantly moving and shifting to create confusion for penalty killers. The Canucks themselves I think, I think what I'm starting to like more about NHL, the more I see it, is like the passes, bro. Like the passes, I'm, it's some nice passes. You know what I'm saying? I need to see like the best assist. Who? Let me know in the comments, actually. Who was like the best, um, it's not even a word, but assister? <laughs> I don't know how they even say it. But who had like the best assist ever? Like who's the most, you had like somebody who's the most flashiest assist. So they, they might be good for like highlight material. Then somebody might just be getting assists um, that they just got assists. Like, you know, they might not be doing crazy passes, but they just get the most assists ever. So yeah, we, we gonna check them out. Let me know in the comments. Confusion for penalty killers. The Canucks themselves play a dime information on the penalty kill, and as we've seen in the Rangers series against Carolina, right. there's plays to be made down low. The Oilers' yeah. power play takes what it's given. It isolates the lone defenseman down low, and Hyman buries to make it one nothing. For the Canucks, whoa, how do you score that? The lone defenseman down low, and Hyman buries. Oh, he through his legs to make it one nothing. For the Canucks, they're probably better off sealing the goal line to avoid these two-on-ones and force Edmonton to just try and beat them up high. It's not an ideal situation, but when you have a power play that dominant, you need to take away the highest percentage play. Now, if that adjustment is made later in the series, look for Edmonton to move McDavid to the point so that he can facilitate looks where there's space. Now, when 5-on-5 five five in this series, the Oilers are going to try and take advantage of Vancouver's defensive zone coverage and how they collapse. The Canucks play a relatively passive style in their own end, and with the way that the Oilers interchange in the offensive zone, it can give Edmonton extra space to make a play. Not against the Red two, Wings. The Oilers have good speed off the rush to get the Canucks disorganized. Ian Cole makes a bad play under pressure to Dreisaitl. He kicks it up high, and Ekholm has all day to step into this one with the passivity of the Canucks. With the Oilers leading 2-zip, Vancouver throws its third line on to take an offensive zone draw. The Canucks get into a 3-2 look on the faceoff. Two big bodies are in front. Joshua plays the boards, and he's Johnny on the spot for the rebound. Then the Canucks become a victim of some bad bounces and tough goaltending. First, the Oilers do a good job again at backing up the Vancouver D with their speed, and they use the space to find a trailer. CC takes a clapper, it bounces off a of Cole and into the net. Then Edmonton takes advantage of a poor gap in the neutral zone against Hyman, and he's got an easy zone entry due to slight misreads in the middle. The shot changes speeds on the follow through, and it finds a way to sneak in five hole, and that's one that Seelovs wants back. With it okay. now being 4-1 for the Oilers late in the second, all Dang. Vancouver needs to do is get one to create the seed of doubt 
despite them not having a good start. A crucial part for the Canucks' success is their speed and support on the puck in 50-50 battles. We've seen it all year long and in the first round especially, but here the forecheck of Vancouver is textbook and it comes in waves. As the Oilers go back to play the puck, Garland misses taking the body on his man, but yeah, before the D can even adjust to make a solid play, the F2 is is already there to swarm him and force a quick decision. He throws it up the boards and the third layer of Canucks give them possession mm -hmm. in the zone. As this puck Dang. rims around, the D takes a chance to pinch without the support given that it's 4-1. Vancouver starts to play on their toes and again, there's instant support on the puck Ooh, okay. from the Canucks. It's poked down low, Lindholm centers the puck, gets a fortunate bounce, Dang. and now the seed of doubt has D been in the third period. Wow, and it's crazy too because I already know in the highlights they wouldn't even show like the full play. It would probably just be like the like the half of the play. So I would just literally see him passing it to him and then him making that pass. But whole time this hall was a uh, 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 perfectly executed, bro. Perfectly on the puck executed from the Canucks. It's poked down low. Lindholm centers the puck, gets a fortunate bounce, and now the seed of doubt. Ooh, that was a great pass. Edmonton. I like that. In the third period, we would start to see the speed of Vancouver imposing itself on Edmonton, and it's that same support on the puck that creates another goal. With this being a four-on-four -four situation, McDavid makes a decent defensive play on Besser that can spell trouble if he heads the other way with his speed. Oh, yeah, right, right. Besser does a good job at making sure McDavid doesn't just cleanly mm. run away with the puck, but then look at the support that comes in to give the puck carrier options. First, it's Miller, and then it's Susie to provide help and keep the play alive in the zone. The puck eventually finds Besser on the flank, JT Miller's on the goal line, and he channels his inner Sidney Crosby with a beautiful chop tip on the uh, goal line. Whoa! Nah, that's, that's a player I actually heard of. Uh, Crosby? Yeah, I have heard of him. Yep. I Crosby heard of him with a beautiful chop tip on the goal line. Though. To beat Stuart Skinner. I like that. Play. This I like is that. such an intelligent play because Nurse is a bigger Skinner. guy and he already has good position in front of the crease. Instead of trying to fight an uphill battle, trying to jockey for position in that area in the blue paint, he stays tight to the post, knowing that Nurse has to respect the middle of the ice. It's perfect execution, and now it's 4 3. Momentum is a real thing in the playoffs, and with Edmonton chasing the play a little bit and on its heels, Vancouver starts to take advantage. As the Dang. puck heads up ice for Vancouver, Edmonton is in a decent position considering they have numbers. But once again, Dang. it's Vancouver's speed that gives Edmonton problems. With Edmonton closing off the middle, Bluger is going to attack the gap to give Hoglander a bank option so that he can bypass the Oilers in the neutral That's zone. Smart. Now, That's smart. Bluger That's has smart. a semi break, which forces Edmonton to bust back and over collapse to take away the threat in the middle of the ice. That leaves okay. all this space for Bluger to use. He finds the other big Z in Zadorov and he claps it. See, home. my thing is okay, and this is the reason why I say I have so much respect for goalies, or not even goalies, but uh, hockey players in general. Because, like, when you, when somebody shoots this type of shot, other, like, they're big Z and Z this shot right here, this looks very hard to do. Y'all barely can't see. He already back here. So it's like, and I know for y'all, whoever played hockey before, you know, it's probably normal. But to me, it's not, bro. Because, like, how are you making this, bro? Everybody in the middle. And you can somehow snipe it perfectly in the goal. You know what I'm saying? That's why I low-key want to see some more POV videos just to see like how it looks in their specific uh in the in the angle in real life. Is it Dorov? Because like how, bro? How are you doing that? this game? Momentum plays a big part, but it's the speed of Vancouver in the neutral zone with both their puck movement and their legs that created this comeback. With the building rocking and Edmonton seemingly shook by what just transpired, you can just see the hesitancy wow. in their forecheck. Instead of now thinking offense, they're thinking, let's not blow this, and are subconsciously <laughs> playing more defensive. Usually, this forward pressures the puck carrier, but everyone seemingly backs off. That gives Yo. Vancouver just a moment to take advantage and look for a play up ice. Realizing that there's some time for the Vancouver D to execute a breakout, both wingers leave the zone early to create an option for a stretch pass. As this reaches the far blue line, Garland starts to come underneath to build speed and with two passes, the Canucks are back on the attack with speed. Garland wow. hits Skinner with the fake clapper and goes five hole cheese. That is something straight out of Jason Spezza's textbook back in... <gasps> Five. Oh, you got a different angle? Canucks are you had, back please tell me you got a different angle. Speed. Garland hits what Skinner the? with a fake clapper and goes Yo. five. Yo. That is something straight out of Jason Spezza's textbook back in the day. 
and the Canucks come all the way back from a 4-1 deficit what? to take the lead. But this one isn't over, this and tough. the Canucks still have to defend that lead against a team that is basically automatic with an extra man on the ice. With the goalie pulled in the final minute of play, the Canucks do an excellent job of stuffing Edmonton. Remember earlier in the game and in the video when I said Vancouver's passivity in their zone is something that Edmonton will try to expose. Well, with the net empty, look at how effectively they flex out and pressure the puck carrier while staying within structure. A couple of massive blocks and defensive plays from the Brock star Brock Besser keeps Edmonton off the board and the Canucks complete an epic comeback in game one. The Oilers may have the fastest player on the planet, but the team speed of Vancouver as a whole can be a difference maker in this series. Based on game one, this has the potential to be a track meet as the key to winning for both teams will be determined in the neutral zone. When both teams were able to use their speed through the middle of the ice and cause the other to over collapse, good things ended up happening. If one of these teams can either slow down or outpace the other in the neutral zone, they stand a good chance of winning this series. As for the mental aspect of a game like this, we saw firsthand how Edmonton became more passive and timid in their decision making when they blew the lead. That's Great crazy. teams don't let a positive or negative result bleed into the rest of the series, but Max? it will be in the back of Edmonton's mind the next time they try and hold a lead. We just seeing, honestly, bro, we're seeing everything in this initial playoffs. Let me know, is this one of the top NHL playoff performances we ever seen? Like, almost every game is a good game. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is real good, good games, bro. You know what I mean? I don't know. See, I know for, like, NBA and NFL, it hasn't really been, like, good, good content to watch. For a viewer's perspective. So ever since like the 2010s, 2016, that's like the last time the NBA, NFL was good. Nowadays it's trash. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know if it's the same with NHL. I don't know at all. Uh, Y'all can let me know. But I feel like this is, if it has been trash, it's going to be good now. Shit. So what Blowing do you think of this game? Like let what? us know in the comments down below. And give us your predictions of who wins this series. Hey, without a shot on goal, are you? they actually clamped him? I didn't know that was possible. I didn't know that was possible. Okay. <laughs> and in First time in this career. That's actually We've insane. got tons more breakdowns coming, so make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on a single thing. Hey.